There we go. Okay. Hi, this is Jody King Colgrove with Quantum Techniques, and um, we're here with Steve Daniel, and we're doing kind of another interview to talk about um, kind of today's subject is the immune system and how that is being impacted uh, right now as we're going through the pandemic. But it's something that you always need to have a real strong immune system. So I think it's a great topic to help us know how we can maintain our health and wellness now and into the future. Um, and I'm just kind of impressed lately how it's always been a priority in, in my life and my parents' life, and I can see that as a priority also in my family. And so I'm hoping that that also becomes a priority in your life too. Um, so um, what we do is we work with people all over the world on the phone, um, and so that way you can be in the comfort of your own home or wherever you're at, and um, we can help you um, find out what's going on and why you're not feeling well and what you can do about it. And so we do that by um, our QT um, treatments and our codes that we do. And so we want to kind of explain that a little bit better today because sometimes it can be hard, I think, and sometimes for us to explain. So I think Steve does a great job at that. So um, Steve, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and um, explain how QT works. I'm uh, <clears throat> Dr. Stephen Daniel. I'm, I'm actually the founder. been doing this uh, full-time now for 22 years and uh, trained a lot of people. And, you know, it's very rewarding and satisfying. And to be honest, QT is the most advanced, comprehensive form of energy medicine throughout the world. And the world has never needed QT more than right now. That's for sure. And so, you know, QT, unlike traditional medicine, believes that the body was designed to heal itself. Now, when it can't, then there's something blocking it, okay? And I think the, what QT does remotely over the phone is go through a series of, of scans. Scans are ways of asking the body questions and using remote muscle testing, finding out what information is missing from the body. How do you get it to heal? You know, when you think about it, most people uh, who are in true into traditional medicine don't really think much about their immune system. They think, well, if I get sick, I'll go to the doctor and get a medication and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. If they always have sinus infections, they never ask, hmm, I wonder why I have a sinus infection three times a year, mm -hmm. which is usually their diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with this work, what we do is we say, is your immune system functioning as a 10 of 10 or not? And how do we get it there? And we look at the different aspects of the immune system. Um, you know, let me uh, make a note here for something I want to remember to say. So a little bit later. So that's how it works. Um, you know, we scan the body through a series of questions that we've been developing over 22 years. And then we give the information back to the body in what we call a code. A code is a series of acupressure appointments that we create uniquely for each person and it shows the body okay so you've got this virus and you've got this milk allergy this is where it's blocking your body and then get the body to heal now we also have generic codes that we have sent out the coronavirus code that are effective for most people it's a little more effective it's kind of like you know you buy something off the rack well a lot of times it fits sometimes it doesn't but if you have it tailored, it fits perfectly. So that's the purpose of a unique individual session is where specifically in your body is this and are there other things blocking an immune response, both physical and not physical? That's a great way. I, I like how you said that about the clothes on the rack because that's a very good visual to help people understand it, how, why generic codes are good, but doing it more individually is really helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what we do is, is uh, at, when we work with someone is we're finding out through these questions, you know, what's going on with your body, how it's being impacted, whether it's through foods like Steve had mentioned, or bites, um, or maybe, um, you know, let's say you've been cleaning uh, with cleaning fluids and they may enter your mucosa lining in your nose and so you have an inhalant or you may have gotten them on your hands and so it's just your astringents are very, um, you know, stripping to your skin and so that is a contactant. Uh, then we also find out if there's um, in, uh, pathogens like viruses and bacteria, mold, or it can be a, a big issue also, and parasites. And so we find those things are what's impacting your body, and then let your body know, okay, this is where they're hanging out, where they shouldn't be in order to get your health back. 
And then we give you, like I said, a specific code that you can um, read to help put your body back in a healing state. And every time you read that code, it's like you're retreating your body like the session we had on the phone. And that really helps your body um, to be able to, to, to clear out and help any sludge and die off that you might be having to help with that. So great. So during this time of um, dealing with the coronavirus, uh, virus, what do people need to know about their immune systems? Well, <clears throat> there's actually four things that we do. Uh, you know, the first immune pathway, and this is you know traditional, is immune one. It's the acquired immune system, where you know what happens in this lifetime that may interfere, like virus, bacteria, heavy metals, trauma fields. And this is something that's the immune system that Bruce Lipton is talking about in the biology of the belief that, you know, where your biography, and that's something that Carolyn May said, becomes your biography. So if you think about, <clears throat> if I have a lot of unhealed traumas, they take energy. If we get too much noise, my, uh, new love of my life, my, my 90 pound Rottweiler puppy. I think I will take a break and put her in her kennel. She brought her, can, can you be quiet? Okay, we're gonna try it. If not, I'll, I'll put her up. What can I do? What I was I on a webinar Let's... the other day and a cat kept standing in front of the, uh, the screen and right. it was 10,000 people were on this webinar. And he's like, okay, I gotta get rid of the cat because he wanted to be center stage. <laughs> it's cute. Well, luckily, she's not doing that. She's one year old and 90 pounds, so. <laughs> But so our acquired immune system is the one that like right now, if mine tests as a three of 10, then I probably am sick and I'm not going to fight off viruses. Okay. Immune two is the innate immune system. What you were born with, you know, was that strong? Was that weak? You know, uh, that has to do with, you know, your T cells and killer cells and all that stuff. Number three, I'm going to mention, and that is, you know, there are man-made frequencies designed to hide information from the body. Anesthesias, amnesics, sedatives. Hey, you know, if, if I'm having a root canal, I don't want to feel the pain. So especially things in the neck and head, like a tonsillectomy, sinus surgery, dental anesthesias. Well, those actually block, even though those are gone, if you don't clear those from the body, you may have long-term sinus issues because again, most of our infections come through our eyes, nose, and mouth and ears. It's not like most of them are not through cuts or urinary tract or vaginal area. That's just not how you get most of your infections. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people that have chronic gut issues or chronic UTI issues have an anesthesia, dental anesthesia fields that are letting Pathogens hide where there's this slow drainage from their salivary glands or sinuses down into their gut, UTI, and it never heals. Well, that's easy to fix with a session. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we have what we're calling, I'm going to call it immune four. And it was interesting. I was given that this year. And, you know, with the divine, it's always just in time. Uh, one of the things I love about Wayne Dyer uh, before he passed is one of his statements was, what you seek is already on its way. Well, one of the things that I noticed is that people's immune system, one, they're acquired and they're innate, were testing as a nine of 10, but yet they were getting infections every time they left their house. And this is happening to me last year. And so I said, is there a non-physical field hiding the information necessary to heal this. Well, I'd gone through a pretty big loss and trauma in the last year, you know, relocated, started my life all over. Well, I had aspects of that trauma that were blocking my immune system. This also happens with detox fields. When I cleared that, and, and once I put, I showed the body that, they said, oh yeah, your acquired immune system is not a nine of 10, it's a two of 10. Well, that's why I'm getting viruses every time I leave the house. Mm -hmm. So I cleared that. I have not got a new virus or bacteria since. So, and, and I got over things. So it makes a huge difference. Well, right now there is a huge fear, panic, terror feel, whether that's you're going to get the coronavirus or your family members are, or what am I going to have to live on after this? So that's a huge fear. 
And that's something that we can clear, boot up the immune system. Um, there's not one code for that because there's different trauma fields, there's different aspects. So that would require a session. You know, you, we've sent out the coronavirus code. You're welcome to use that. Um, if you're worried about your immune system, we can boot it up to get it functioning as a 10 of 10, which is pretty important. And that would identify the emotional fields. You know, are there some foods? Are there some old anesthesias? Are there heavy metals? What is it that allows you to keep getting sick? Now, this also balances the body that has autoimmune disease. So, you know, that's how we address improving the immune system. And to date, I have worked with several coronavirus patients. I'm not saying that what I did cured them. I'm just telling you the results. Um, there's probably been nine. Um, two were on ventilators, four were in ICU, uh, five were quite elderly, all recovered within one to three days. So, you know, I, I'm, I don't live in fear. Now, I do practice, you know, physical distancing. Um, I work at home. That's pretty easy. I mainly walk my dog, go to the dog park. That's pretty easy. I just go get some food. So I'm, I'm being smart, you know. Uh, and if I had symptoms, I would treat myself. I guess if I got that sick, I haven't been to a hospital since I had a head injury at 13, but you know, I'd, I'd go to the hospital. Um, but what I'm saying is, especially if we catch it early, I, I don't really have, I have concern for other people. I have concern about our countries and the world and the, mm -hmm. the economies. But in terms of, am I frightened for myself, my clients, my practitioners, my family? Uh, I mean, actually not mm -hmm. because we can take care of it. Right, that's exactly how I feel. It's kind of like, you know, I. I feel like I have this great thing that I understand and I want to share it with more people. And, um, and, it, and it's, it's hard not to want to get it more out there. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, so, and I think, like I said, it's so important that that non-physical is, is identified because yeah, it just keeps kind of falling off or you keep getting things if you, if that's not identified what it is. And a lot of times it's, you know, emotions about all this. It could be a belief system, you know, like the world's not safe right now. And so that can keep your immune system lowered. Um, it could be an intention where, um, and this is a hard one sometimes for people to realize, but mom sometimes, well, if I got a cold, then maybe I could rest. And so sometimes we have to kind of really fight saying, no, I don't want a cold. I don't want that intention because I want to be able to take a, a rest for myself when I need it, not have to be sick to get one. And it's a really important in, intention that we have to clear on some uh, moms and things like that. Well, you know, one other thing I want to mention is that, you know, long before I was doing this work, I was a clinical psychologist and my background was psychophysiological disorders. And Traditional medicine is known for years and years and years. We're going back 30 years ago that after a major loss, a death, a divorce, a financial loss, there is a measurable drop in the immune response within six weeks. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to mention uh, is I've had four people that said, listen, I really want to help my family member, but they don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, make a list of everybody you cared about read the coronavirus code for everybody at once, like you're sending them a blessing of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I said, secondly, if you're concerned about your family member, and two of these were in ICU units overseas, send me their picture. It doesn't have to be recent. Mm -hmm. I treated them through their picture. It took less than 10 minutes. And again, they were out of the hospital in three days. So there's so much you can do remotely. And again, traditional medicine, as we're seeing, it can, it can save your life once you're in the hospital. But in terms of how does it help you avoid, excuse me, how does it help you uh, enhance your immune system mm -hmm. so that you're not vulnerable? That's really not, that's an alternative medicine background, not really traditional medicine in general. Yeah, yeah. So some of the other things that we um, have found is how important the microbiome is. And the microbiome is any of that internal skin that's, you know, a lot of times mucosal lining is kind of thought of the same way, but it's, you know, your eyes and, or so your nose and your whole sinuses and your whole digestive system and how much the balance of that is going to help you have a strong immune system. And um, I have done over the years different um, YouTube videos on the immune system. And what I found was interesting is that if kids are born vaginally, they get washed with a 
ability for that immune system to and microbiome to be very strong. And when they're done through C-section, the kids have a little more challenge of a immune system. And I found that very fascinating that even that, what God designed, um, is meant to help us. And um, I just think that's really important and how much we do to mess that up, you know, whether it's the foods we intake, um, glycosate in, in a lot of the foods that we intake and, you know, pesticides and, and fertilizers um, and air quality. And, um, and, and so being aware of how we're maintaining that microbiome in our bodies, both with toxins in our environment, also things to boost it, whether it's herbs and um, um, supplements that are really helpful for that that all helps that immune system be very uh, strong. <clears throat> Another thing that we have found besides the pathways that Steve was talking about is there's also immune system uh, pathways that need to be online for your body to be strong. And uh, um, we, we've identified quite a few of them, but the first seven are really important. And so Steve, I didn't know if you wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about that and how that fits into the first like innate and acquired immune system? Well, you know, there are certain organs and glands that are pretty critical for the immune system. And so you want to make sure that the body's got good communication with all of those. And so we, over time, by testing, we found certain patterns and certain organs communication. And if those patterns are broken, and again, what the body can see, it can heal what causes broken communication, physical and emotional trauma, old pathogens, anesthesias, heavy metals, bad foods, emotional trauma. <clears throat> and so when we check, you know, is 100% of this field online with all immune pathways, it's, it's, if not, then we're gonna go back and look at those pathways and make sure the body has those online. But usually after we've treated somebody a few times, you, you, you put them on the first time, they usually stay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just like, again, it's communication with critical organs and glands to maintain ideal immune health. And I found that sometimes if you test for the whole body, it's yes. But if you have a specific tissue, like you mentioned, like the sinuses or a skin um, that's not getting well, sometimes that specific area doesn't have all those immune systems online. It's just it's kind of like what we, uh, when we first had a, a talk like this, we talked about how what happens in your body is there's like a, a lightning strike. And so it knocks out all the electricity in the house. And so when you're ready to go back in, you flip the breaker, but maybe there were certain breakers that didn't get put back on. And so sometimes those tissues in the body where you've had more blockages, whether it's the anesthesia, the heavy metals, they just aren't back online with the whole body's immune system. So we have to identify those and specifically for those tissues, put those pathways back online. Well, it, it almost like, if, if you think of that metaphor, yeah, I've reset my my power panel, my circuit breakers, but man, my washing machine's not working. Oh, the GFI it's plugged into needs to be reset. Mm -hmm. So that's why, oh yeah, check the power box, everything's good. And then you say, yeah, but what about this cut on my hand? You know, Or what about this issue that won't go away? And the body says, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the GFI's popped on that one. We need more information. What popped the GFI, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we talked about the innate and acquired um, and how emotional issues kind of impact that. So did you have anything else that you wanted to share about the immune system that we may not have covered yet that will help people understand what they can do to help take care of their health and wellness now and their immune system? I would say a daily practice of gratitude and forgiveness, mm -hmm. because those are probably the, the two most healing frequencies available is, you know, gratitude and forgiveness. And when you hold fear and terror, anger, rage, guilt, shame, resentment, they are huge blocks to being healthy on all levels. So, you know, you know, be mindful of being being in gratitude and, and no matter how bad it is right now, you know, you have food for today, maybe not tomorrow. We don't know about next month. You know, that's where we have to have a, a spiritual belief, mm -hmm. but ultimately on a personal level, finding a way to experience gratitude and forgiveness in your life every day goes a long ways, both physical and emotional healing. Yeah. And, and I think like that awareness, you know, I'm, I'm doing a, a 
kind of a virtual coffee with some of my friends um, where we're just taking, you know, some of those earned reward and essential pain feelings of happy, sad, afraid, guilty, and then angry, sad, of, uh, okay. Then the earned rewards of happy, grateful, secure, proud, and then essential pain, angry, sad, afraid, and guilty. And we're identifying those because it's almost like sometimes we don't realize we're feeling them. And so we, you know, push them down because we're like, well, we shouldn't feel, um, you know, uh, angry or shouldn't feel guilty. And, and one lady says, you know, I'm, I'm kind of grateful for this coronavirus because, you know, my kids leave for college. Um, and this is a wonderful time of that last connection before they leave. And so there's an opportunity here to take what we've been through and to really be able to use it for self introflection healing and to be able to not or be aware how we're not stuffing those emotions and and getting them out and like you said that's so important to be able to identify them and if you have those negative switch it and be also able to see the what you're grateful for and have that balance there um i went around this morning and took pictures of all the flowering uh flowers in my neighborhood because i'm in an area where it, they're blooming right now and, and they said that's one of the things that is maybe bothering people is they can't see those spring flowers right now and, and the wildflowers that are coming out. And so um, I just thought, you know, that would be a great thing to share with people is flowers, you know, because they were grateful that, you know, life is continuing. I mean, I, when I go a box in the morning, the birds are singing, you know, they don't know anything's going on. I mean, they're just happy. And so, you know, we want to appreciate that or join along with them to appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's so important. Sometimes people don't realize that that's such a simple thing that you can do, but it's so powerful um, to stay in that gratitude. And, um, you know, you've really helped me through the years to stay in that gratitude. And there's been times, you know, where I haven't been and it's been very, you know, dark and, and frustrating and stuff like that. But always pushing to see the gratefulness, I think, is helpful. And it's funny because I use a term all the time that is not from me, it's from you. And that is, I choose to view the world as a wonderful place of joy, beauty, and love. And a lot of times, you know, we say, well, what are you happy and grateful for? But joy, beauty, and love is a little bit of a shift. And so it makes me always be more conscious and to think through, well, what am I really happy about and joyful about? And so, um, so it's finding those words that really resonate with you to be able to find that practice that's, that's really helps you connect and be grateful. I think is, is really important. Well, and I also think, you know, we are innately created in the image of God. That means we're innately creative. You can aim it, but you can't turn it off. So if all you do is sit at home and watch the news, you're creating fear and terror and anxiety. What about being creative, kind of like Jody is saying with the pictures, find a way to give back. You know, if, if that's, you know, getting your neighbor's mail for them if they have trouble getting out, you know, um, whatever that would be, find a way to give back. And you're seeing so much of that right now that I think is going to, it's going to help transform our world's consciousness. You know, we'll go kicking and screaming because, you know, we don't want to lose our discomfort, but this is a time of inner reflection, inner reflection and transformation for everyone who's willing to take the journey. Yeah. And I've been surprised at the things I've learned. You know, I'm always wanting to read more. And even now when I have more, a little more time, I'm still not reading. So that obviously was not the issue. <laughs> you know? right, so, right. you know, so being aware of what patterns that you keep falling into, um, that can be an issue. Um, yeah. and, and then just how it's impacting you. So, yeah. Well, great. Why, well, um, is there anything else that you had to sh share with us today, Steve? Well, you know, my grandma said something that sticks with me and she says, you know, there's two ways to be wealthy. One is, you know, this is you know, old school, but be a millionaire. Now we know it'd have to be a billionaire. <laughs> but then she said, or learn to enjoy the simple things. This is an opportunity to get back to the simple things. Like for me, man, I am up super early. So I watch the sunrise every morning. You know, I walk my dog every day. And, and, you know, I, I live in a beautiful area in Prescott, Arizona, where I've got, you know, beautiful uh, mountain views from my, my house and my office. And, you know, what saw my first Arizona rainbow, I used to have them in Hawaii all the time, uh, just this week. And 
right outside my window was a quail, first quail that I've seen on my property on my fencing, you know, calling early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just learn to enjoy those simple things and gratitude. And I think being something that we learned um, from Guy Finley is to be present enough to hear it. And that takes some practice to not be so in your mind thinking about things, thinking about the story, but to learn how to be in the present moment. And you say something I always appreciate where it's like, okay, if I leave this present moment, that's when I suffer. And it could be behind or it could be forward, but it's, it's in that present moment. So just being aware of being aware of our thoughts, trying to be in the present moment. And that's when we can see the, the quail and the bird singing and, and be present. Well, and, and to add to that, the present moment is the only thing that's real. And it's the only time you heal. You're, what you think about the past is just your imagination. Three people in the same event have three different imaginations of what happened. When you think about the future, it's just your imagination. So the only thing that heals is truth. And the only truth is in the present moment. It's now every, everything else is just a belief that you've created. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jody, what's our special offer we're giving? Um, so our offer is that if people are concerned that they have come in contact with the coronavirus or if they uh, have symptoms, then we are giving a 10-minute free session. Um, so you would go onto our website at quantumtechniques.com and you would sign up for a session request. And then we um, will test you for 10 minutes to find out if you have it and have symptoms. And like we talked about, put the body back online so that the immune system can start functioning to recognize it and get it to start working again. Um, so that's what we're offering. And um, you can pick any other practitioners that are on our site to do that. We all know what we're, we're doing. And I've worked with some uh, coronavirus uh, people already and checking to make sure they did or did not have it. Um, and so that's what we're offering. So again, it's quantumtechniques.com. And if you want to work with us even more and get a little bit more in depth with your immune system, in case it has, um, you, you feel like you have a weak one, or you know that you've got some other issues like we talked about that you wanted to work on with the acquired, the, um, um, the innate and also the emotions, then you can fill out a session request and then you also fill out a client history. And that way we kind of know where, what you've been dealing with, you know, what surgeries have you had, you know, what anesthesia is, what kind of foods you eat. So no, all that stuff helps us be able to see the full picture of what you're dealing with so that we can help your body get back into a healing state. Um, so we just appreciate the opportunity to share this information with you and um, so grateful and we hope that each and every day you're able to find something that you're profoundly grateful for. Um, any last um, thoughts? Uh, just, just to say, you know, be safe and well and mm -hmm. we have quantum pack practitioners on call seven days a week at least six hours a day. So if you're in crisis, don't wait till the end of the day on Saturday or Sunday, because, you know, we do go to sleep once in a while, but feel free to reach out and we'll do our best to help you. Yes. Well, great. Well, thank you. I appreciate you listening and um, we'll try to do a couple more of these with different topics that you um, uh, would appreciate and learn from. So thank you, Steve. I really appreciate it. You bet. Many blessings. All right. Take care.